playing in the beginning you're all clinky 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 with the ice cream stirring my clink in your glass my venti decaf no. coffee which by the way not really coffee it's a big glass of like chocolate milk right but there is there are four shots of decaf espresso in there girl so ooh, uh, get wow so she got a high say yeah welcome yeah. to another week of it would seem as though the podcast where we talk about anything everything and nothing uh mostly nothing i'm vesta i'm annika and i'm excited to be here yeah, me too. You know, another week we're on week ninety six. That's a lot. Of our podcast. That's yeah. a lot of weeks. It's almost two years. We're uh, coming right up on our one hundredth episode, which is gonna feel like pretty crazy. Weird. And amazing. Uh, that yeah. is super weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the holidays. This week is uh, Eaton Day. Eaton Day. Because you know, and I learned recently that this holiday happens in October yep. in Canada, right? And it's just their Harvest, yeah, celebration. Sure. So it has nothing to do, obviously, with pilgrims, right, and all that crap. Yeah. And initially, when it was celebrated here, it also had nothing to do with pilgrims. It was about the harvest. It was about the end of the season. Yep. You know, blah blah blah. And then somebody was like, "Let's turn this into this bullshit story of, you know, Native Americans and in and um, white people, white people, calling and how pilgrims, the white people." Did all this wonderful shit, and yeah, they didn't do it. And wonderful. together, they came together. And to, they came ate. together. They clasped hands over a chair. Or mm-hmm. the white people came and said, ooh, they have food. Kill them. Kill them. Let's take their food. Yeah. And what is it? People talk about Thanksgiving, but like one of the chiefs of that tribe, or the chief of the tribe, what's his name? Like Powhatan? Powhatan? Powhatan. Yeah. They beheaded him at some point. Sure. And left his head on a spike in the middle of wherever the fuck they lived. You know what I mean? Like yeah. their civ- quote unquote civilized area yeah. in the center of town. And it was there for hundreds of years. Hundreds? Yeah, girl. It was there for a long time until like pretty contemporary time. Gross. Yeah, well, by that time it was just a skull. Still. But still how fucking disrespectful and upsetting. Yeah. Can you imagine? Ugh, no. You no, no, no. Imagine. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, no. But... Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. I know. I, look, I struggle with Thanksgiving. I like food and I like gathering or whatever, but I fucking hate the idea of Thanksgiving. And I always, and I really have the whole ideology behind it. It's not something that I enjoy. Are you shocked? Are you shocked? that no. some bullshit story pushed like, against Native Americans. And I'm like, you know what? I hate that. <laughs> Shocking. What's America. interesting to me is the first time I ever saw a more true representation not i'm sure not accurate yeah but a more true representation sure. of what happened was on roseanne oh. do you remember that episode yeah. uh-huh. when, when dj did the play at school for thanksgiving and the white people came in and shot all the indigenous yeah. folks and it was mm-hmm. like happy thanksgiving and it was like and uh, then the, and the people in the audience of course are horrified this is what you're teaching our children it's like well that's what happened. that's what happened yeah so yeah that's what we're teaching yeah. your children but and now of course they're in what like uh Indiana? Where were they? Uh, Illinois. Illinois. It's yep. almost the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's those middle bits. They're uh, all, I don't know where I are. hate your middle bits. I hate you know? middle bits. Uh-huh. Uh, where they absolutely would not teach that. No. Well, you know, and like, we want to say that because in our version, in our idea of most of the United States, it is white people. When yeah. we think about, you know, not... I don't so much anymore, but like when I think about the United States, you think, oh, who wants to go to Indiana? That's white people, right? But there are reservations literally everywhere. Yes. You know what I mean? And like some full nations of people of indigenous tribes. And so it's it's funny because sometimes like maybe in Lanford or wherever the fuck they were, they would have taught that because how many native, not in right. Roseanne's fictional Lanford because clearly it was all white people. And, yes. You know, well, your, no, she did have your token, yes. <laughs> your token people of color. Yes. But like in real Lanford, is there a large Native American population? Right. Are they actually right. going to teach that? Like that's. Interesting to know. That is an interesting thought. Right. But you're right. We do, I think, because we are coastal people, Mm -hmm. 
you know, we think about the middle as being, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, yeah. Ugh, too it's like, gross. you the West Coast, the East Coast, that's fine, sure. but the middle? Mm-mm. Well, on the East Coast... Is only fine, <laughs> like, part of it because the lower half yeah. being Florida. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that mess that's going on down there. And I know a lot of good people that live in Florida or have lived in Florida. So Yeah. But that's just it, is we, I think, get into our own ideas and prejudices of what we think the United States is like. Mm-hmm. And having not traveled, I know you've traveled to many places, but having not traveled to anything in the middle, mm. I don't really have anything... Ugh. To know what Honestly, I mean. And then, like, let me tell you, I've been to many Midwestern states, and I find nothing about them appealing. And that sounds like, oh, very, like, oh, I went in with blinders on and only saw what was shitty, you know? But I've been to Michigan. I've been all over Michigan. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. Because having lived in Portland and San Francisco and Los Angeles, you know, all of the, these places, the West Coast, the coast are up to date. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we're with the times. We know what's happening, whatever. Now with the internet, you would assume everyone would. But the Midwest is very, oh, don't you know, hunky-dory, kind of. It's, and racist. <laughs> like, oh, it yeah. is wildly racist. And it's just, I, when I was in Detroit, Michigan, I was like, this is the most unsafe I have literally ever felt in my life. Like, just walking around Detroit, you feel it. You can feel this like overwhelming just atmosphere of tension oh. because there's so much racial like racial tension. Okay. Also, Detroit looks abandoned. Half of it looks abandoned, and then there's parts that they're you know they're trying to revitalize it. Yeah. Everywhere, but like right. there are whole swaths of the county neighborhoods yeah. that are that have been empty or that are empty. Yeah. That are and like I remember people in Detroit being like going to the suburbs that don't have people living in the houses is more dangerous than downtown. And at first I was like, what do you mean? But who's hanging out in abandoned places? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Drug addicts. But I drove through places, neighborhoods, our neighborhood, but a picture, nobody lives there. That would be super weird. It's just on its own. Well, yeah. And driving down the street, which is like known to be lower income, predominantly black, whatever. And then you turn right off that street. Like you see a mom who you know, uh, walking barefoot, pushing a stroller and holding a hand of a baby like that. And you turn the street and it's mansions, white people, mansions with security fences and everything, but they live right next to where people are fucking struggling. Like that, that to me though, feels like the Midwest. Cause even being in, uh, Kansas city, cause I was in Missouri and in Kansas, Mm. (laughs) go me. But like, it just feels like, yeah, the, the population, of uh, black folk is higher than here, you know? But it it doesn't... I feel like it's more racist. You but know what I mean? the divide is bigger. Severe. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. I don't know. And I just feel like the culture of the Midwest is cultureless. You know what I mean? It's all like hot dog pie and whatever. I don't know. Well, and I think that's also just stuff that we... And I hope it's not true, but I think it's how we feel because how we're taught that, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, well, we're going to go to this church you know picnic and yeah like, everybody's making like cookie salad and shit where there's no fruits or vegetables honestly you know, like... but that's kind of it and that's how it, it's very when you think of midwestern like every woman's wearing like a sweater and the elastic waist jeans up to her titties and you know her hair is permed and she's wearing big old glasses it's probably like 1990s like stay at home minnesota mom but in my mind that's like every woman who lives in the midwest you okay. know what i mean all right it just feels bland um, and you know, I don't know. So it's the town folk of stranger things. Oh, 100%. But all over the entire but everywhere. And okay. there, some of them are just like, and a lot of it is quite, uh, conservative. Okay. Right? So it's yeah. a little unsettling, but it feels like, I don't know. It feels like Whoville, but, but on acid, but not oh. a fun trip. You know what oh, I mean? Just wonky there. and mal- yeah. misshapen. Like, that's how I feel mid the Midwest. It's interesting. I didn't know a whole lot about Detroit other yeah. than Motor City. Yeah. And Motown. Mm-hmm. And that kind of thing. So I knew yeah. some of the good things that come out of Motown. But I also did know that uh, a lot of there was a lot of financial hardship and struggle and poverty. Yeah. Um, I started watching a show on... Oh, whichever channel is like where they build shit where it's all the ones where they are building houses and remodeling mm-hmm, everything mm-hmm. whatever channel that is um there's a show called Bargain Block okay and it's this gay couple 
Gangs. Who goes in and buys these houses that are just moments from the wrecking ball okay. that have been abandoned, uh, that are about to be condemned, that the city sells them for like, for, cool. here's this house, just take it, mm-hmm. basically. I mean, now there's, I mean, because they've done, I think, most of the ones that were like free or a thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Uh, but they take these houses, totally renovate them, yeah. and then sell them for what I think, because I live here, yeah. uh, is nothing. Because okay. like they're selling these beautiful little houses that in my neighborhood at work, where I work, would go for a million dollars, and they're selling for like 100, 150000 yeah. Nothing. You know, yeah. Up top price, I, when I saw it was like one hundred and fifty. And it's like, and this then, is a beautiful, fully restored... So basically a brand new house. Yeah. Because they've gone through and restored or replaced everything. Yeah. Because these houses have been sitting, like, sometimes with no roof. Yeah. Or no windows or Crazy. no whatever. And they're, so they're full of garbage. And their floors are rotting. Mm-hmm. And they often have vermin and whatever. And they go in and completely... So their plan or their mission mm-hmm. is to restore Detroit. And so they go block by block... Oh, I love buying up these places, and there are full blocks where it's like every house on this street they bought and restored. I love that, and so of course, because I'm trying to be more aware of the world and uh, my place in it, and white people and whatever. Yeah, my first thought was, oh God, it's these white people going in. I mean, you know, white like savior, gentrifying. But yeah, gentrifying, fixing up. But, but it's not. On every episode, you see folks from the neighborhood walking over, going. Thank God. This yeah. house was an eyesore and it was sitting there, you know, and people were coming in and out, you know, to yeah. like a flop house doing drugs, whatever. We're so grateful that you're coming and fixing up. Yeah. You know, I do. But, but the fact that they're selling it for not crazy amounts of money. Yeah. Is a huge factor. But they also a lot, they sell it as is, like with, like, uh, you know how they always stage a house for those kind of things? Oh, with furniture and shit. Yeah. yeah. But they sell it like that. It's like, here it is. House full of furniture with, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so that's how you get it. For that price, you still get, like, couches and beds, beds and whatever. Yeah. And it's like, that's amazing. I would take it. Yeah. Well, and, like, so it's... I, I get the idea where it could be, like, white savior. Very much that. White savior could be in any uh, context, right? But I feel like it's... Technically, it wouldn't be gentrification because nobody had lived there for how long, right? Right. And it's not like the white people or the queers or whatever moved in and ran people out. Like, that's not what right. happened. And, well, and, the, and that's just it. The uh, the tax prices aren't going up because they're right. not making the houses, like... Bougie. You know, they're not going, well, we've now replaced everything and put in all this marble and blah, blah, blah. Because right. they're also keeping the cost low. Yeah. Like, we're going to put in a butcher block counter. Yeah. Or we're going to go to Habitat for Humanity yep. and buy some, stru- some yeah. fixtures and so that it keeps the cost low so that they can keep the prices low yeah. so that they're not inflating. And I love that because, you know, Detroit also for a long time, I don't know if they still do it, um, was you could buy houses for nothing or there was a program where they would basically give you like a stipend of money and the house because there are just you can't have that many houses sitting no you know without tenants or without people even just going there um without it being a bigger issue so they were like there was a it was like subsidized by the government where they were helping people basically buy houses and renovate them but they would give you a certain amount of money and then give you a house which is they also gave you a tax uh what's it called abatement whereas like for the first how, two years yeah. or three, you don't pay property tax. Love that. But by getting people back into those neighborhoods, mm-hmm. they're also getting money because they're now getting property tax. Exactly. Money. Yeah. And so, yeah. So it's good for the city. It's good for the neighborhoods because mm-hmm. you don't want to live in a neighborhood where you have a bunch of deserted houses because that no. just asks for trouble. Yeah, because then your house becomes a target. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but I thought that was pretty <clears> cool. <throat> yeah, it is. That is really cool. Um, um, what else? Oh, what else? What I else? Was, what else? I was so irritated this week because, I'm not this whole week, just one day, I was at work talking about Christmas Mm -hmm. and how, you know, it's the last, well, not even the last week, it's the third week of November and I have all my Christmas shopping done. Same. And I said, (laughs) said, but I still have to get uh, a Santa gift for my daughter. Right. At which point my coworker was like, don't you think it's about time you killed Santa? And I was like. 
what? Don't you think it's the time I fucking killed you, you dumb bitch? <laughs> and it was like, why would I do that? And she goes, well, they're old enough now that it's going to be an embarrassment when they're like talking to their friends and saying they still believe in Santa and whatever. And I go, I don't know that they talk about Santa Claus at school. And yeah. even if they do, I'm sure their friends might go, you still believe in Santa? Whatever. And give them some grief about it. It might happen. <clears throat> But who cares? Right. They're big enough and old enough that they can figure that all out on their own. But it's like, this is the magic of the holidays. I, Whether they still believe, yeah. they, they act like they believe. Girl. Yeah. Whether they do or not, I don't know. Right. Because I was going to ask you, do you think that Parker and Grace genuinely believe in Santa? Well, considering that Grace will still say, I need to ask Santa for this. And maybe... But I feel like because their whole life... And this is this is just hype, like, guessing. I don't know. Maybe... Because I feel like, yes, on one hand, I feel like, yes, they still do actually believe in Santa. But on the other hand, I feel like you guys have made it such a, um, a tradition, right? Where they get a Santa gift. They get gifts from Santa. Yeah. And we don't... Just like, one. Right. And we don't make it like, oh, Santa. Right. We don't make it a thing like nudge, nudge, wink. Like, oh, you got it from Santa. So I think maybe they assume that all families are doing this. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's always getting a yeah. thing from Santa. And it's, and it's like... Something that people do to keep magic yeah, life. maybe. That's just, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I wonder if they still genuinely, but you can't ask that question without no. being like, Santa doesn't exist, you know? Right, 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 right. And I, you know, because I love the magic of Christmas, yeah. and I, uh, I love that notion that they still, do. I stopped believing because at the age of 10, my sister was like, ugh, you know that Santa's not even real. Yeah. And then, but it took great delight in in, you know, ruining that for me. And she was like, yeah, everybody already knows, and you should know by now, you're already 10 years old, you should borrow. And, yeah. I like, and I was devastated. I wasn't devastated that it wasn't, I was devastated in the way she told me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you're awful. Yeah. You know. But, you know, that's a whole other story. I, I don't know. I feel like I love, I believe in things that people are like, you believe Absolutely. Real. And I'm like, girl, I believe, you say like, oh, this creature could exist. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Because, like, I'm not going to say no. First of all, it's arrogant to believe that it doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, that I would know. Why the fuck would I know? Right. But also, as a child, I believed in Santa. I believed in all of, like, the legendary kind of sure. people. But there was a point where I kind of just stopped believing. But that's when I stopped believing. I didn't believe there was a God. I didn't believe Santa was... I didn't believe any of these, like, happy... Right. Bring warmth and happiness to children or to people existed. Well, considering your upbringing, that's, that's not surprising. But that's why. It's like, right? uh, well, so where are these ma- magical, yeah. mythical beings if my life is, you know, this? Yeah, and, yeah, and that's it, that. right? Like, I, I didn't see that magic. But as an adult, I still see so much magic in the world. And, like... Much like you, my Christmas tree has been up since the summer. Yours has been up for Mine's a year. Mine's been up all year. Yeah. Um, I don't plan on taking mine down, uh-uh. but I need that. And for your children who I often buy, like, mythology books or, like, witchy books for them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, of course, I hope they still believe in Santa. Well, what's interesting to me is, so when we read mythology, yeah, and, like, the book that we're reading right now is a mixture of ca- real some real characters who existed at some point in the world. Like... Yeah. Niccolo Machiavelli. Machiavelli yeah. was a real person. Yeah. Nicholas Flamel was a real person. Yeah. So some of the people in this story are mm-hmm. real people who've been gone for hundreds of years, but who existed. Yeah. But mixed with gods and monsters from every mythology. Because mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, they're real too. I love that. You know, and then, so my children, I think, probably don't believe that the that these creatures are real, but I think they believe that at one point they were. Yeah. You know, Why not? And, like, and I can't say they weren't. Well, and like, that's all. I wasn't here. No. I mean, right? I'm old, but I'm not that old. And most mythology is intertwined, legendary, mythical, fantastical kind of creatures, places, whatever, but mixed with reality. Real people, real yeah. towns, real time periods. Like, it's, so it isn't a deviation from reality. It is just an embellishment of, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and a lot of it was explanation for the way things happened. Oh, 100%. It's like, you know, so whatever. Read the Bible. And I, but... <laughs> Right. Mm. Yep. But speaking of my children. Oh, good. My son. <laughs> yeah. So cute the other day. We're coming home from school. And I know I told you this story. Coming home from school. And he turns to me out of the blue, really. Mm-hmm. And says, Mom, have I ever told you what gender I like? <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know why, but in my brain, it felt like he was saying, you know, what gender he wanted to be referred Identified to as. as. And yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. And I was like, no. And he said... Well, I like girls. 
And I turned to him and go, did you just come out as straight to yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. he goes, yeah. Yeah. Like, it only seems right if gay people feel like they have to come out. Why shouldn't straight people? I know. And he, then he says to me, did you always know? And I said, no. Never really gave it much thought. Because who cares? Because yeah. who cares? Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I have been telling my children since they were old enough to even contemplate the idea that they would date someday and whatever. It's like, I do not care who you date. Mm-hmm. But... They but. have to be good to you. Mm-hmm. They have to be good people, and you have to be good to them. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, not yeah. one way street. No, man. You have to be good. They have to be good. You have to be respectful people. They have to be okay. And they have to be okay. And it's okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's all okay. Yeah, no, I get that. That's yeah. cute, though. I know. And then because you told me that, and you're like, "Well, gay people have to," and I was like, "You know what? I think now I don't think gay people have to. I think I don't think so. Either. I think people just do their thing. People are like, oh, you're gay. People are like, yeah. You know, yeah, like not yeah. like it's not like okay, everyone sit down." All right, let me tell you. I have to tell you something. <laughs> let me but tell you something. I, you know, I think, though, that could be more our uh, experience of things. Because, like, having queer cousins and queer people... You know, growing up around queer people and having queer people yeah. in our immediate family and being queer people and whatever. Yeah. yeah. I would think that you could just come home one day with somebody and go, Hey, this is uh, my girlfriend or this is who I'm dating yeah. or whatever. And have your parents go... Uh-huh. Well, okay. Sure. And I know yeah. that I have then, as an old person, made assumptions like, oh, so you're gay. No. Mm-mm. Right. Oh, like, yeah. What? But, that's but, also, you're, yeah. but you're the same sex as the person you're dating. Yeah, that is me thinking. Yeah. And it, they then it makes me kind of feel like you're old. Yeah. This is a new world we live in. And one, the labels aren't as important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, you know, like, I just like people. Mm-hmm. I like... All people or like And no I love that. Or... I remember as a kid being like, you should just fall in love with the person. Fall in love with the soul. You know, you don't fall in love with people, you fall in love with souls or whatever. Right. I love that idea. And I love that the lower half of the millennials and younger than me, all these people are just killing it as being human beings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being like, I'm not what you label me as. I am what I am. And I'll date a boy, I'll date a girl, whatever, Right. And they don't put labels on themselves. And that is dreamy. Because how many times in my life I dated a douchebag who was like, well, I'm a Marine and I'm a, I'm a writer. And those are the two things I am. And I'm like, that's boring. Those are your two right. fucking things ever. One of the guys that I worked with when I worked at Gary Lucky, I remember him saying one day, because we were talking about the old lottery dream, you know, if you won the lottery, sure. would you still work? Yeah. And most of us were like, uh, no. No. No, no, no. I would I would start my own charity. Yeah. I would like do that kind of thing, but I wouldn't work at a regular job because no. I don't want to. Agreed. And he said, if I didn't do this job, if I wasn't a hairdresser, I don't know who I would be. And I was like, what? Weird. And I, I didn't even understand that concept. Yeah. It's like, if I was not a hairdresser, then what would I be? Well, mm-hmm. you'd be a, a man. You'd be a husband. You'd be a father. Yeah. You'd be... Whatever, I mean, right. your life started before you were doing hair. Uh, honey, yeah. That, At least I hope. that it, it's, it's fucking... But weird. as a spoiled rich kid mm. who, you know, maybe he didn't know who he was. And that's fine. But, but like... I don't get the, if I'm not... I am not my work. No, I, I also am not any, any box you want to put me in. Do you know what I mean? Like, or I am... But that's the thing. I am multifaceted, right? right? Because I have lots of things I like. I have lots of talents that I have. I have lots of whatever. But, like, I am not, oh, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a student and I, whatever. Like, no. I do lots of fucking things. And to to put yourself, compartmentalize all of you into pieces yeah. instead of looking at you as the whole is kind of the problem, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. You need to look at, and this goes for everything. Like, this will also help, like, body image and mental health. Like, looking at yourself as a whole person and a person who's fallible and a person who is not just one thing or what society says is beneficial. Yeah. Holistically beneficial. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, it's interesting, as you said, being multifaceted. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that, of course, a million times and said it and whatever. But today, as you said it, I visualized it. I visualized actually like a stone. Okay. That has been carved yeah. or cut, however yeah. you do it. And so that it is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And I remember this, like, specifically this one ring that I had, had this stone that was called Sparkling Topaz. Okay. So every angle you looked at it, it looked different. Yeah. It was a different color. Beautiful. It was a different, you know, whatever. If you looked at it just right, it was a bunch of colors. That's so But if you looked at it this one way, it was just a flat pink. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was like, 
but no matter how you looked at it, Much every changed. facet you looked at, it was different. Yeah. And so it was like, that is just today how that came into my head. I was like, oh, right. yeah. Well, and that's, I think how most people are or should be. Yeah. If they're honest with them, it's like, you're not one thing. No. Well, and it, why would you strive to be one thing? Right. And in, instead of being a box girl, mm-hmm. you are a geometric three-dimensional shape, right? Hopefully. Where like every face you look at is different. And that doesn't mean like, oh, you're two-faced. But like there are t- every friend that you have, every person that knows you looks at you differently. You yeah. know what I mean? They see you differently. And there's probably commonalities, drag or funny, or you tell stories well, or whatever it is, you know what I mean? But it it's they all see you differently. And that's right. why there's because everyone has a different experience of you. Right. And that's why there are people who see you as like the villain or the bad guy or you know what I mean, the yeah. black sheep, whatever it is. Like that's why it, so just taking all of that and being okay with being Every all of the things and not just a thing, right? That's what we should strive to do. I, as a young adult, yeah, or youngish, probably when I was half my age that I am now. Okay, uh, I remember thinking how funny it was that I was considered kind of the black sheep of my family because mm. I grew up queer, mm-hmm. and it was like, but I was also the first one to go to college. Uh huh. <laughs> I was the only one to never move back home with mommy. Mm-hmm. I was, you know. I was the only one who never asked anyone else for money. Mm-hmm. I was the only one who like got a, just got a career and, and did it. And stayed with it. And stayed with it. And you're still doing and it. Like, wait, and I'm the black sheep? Right. Bonkers. <laughs> so it's like, because of one weird, one thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's funny to me. In the movie, Postcards from the Edge. Mm, love that movie. I love that movie. Um, Dennis Quaid says to Meryl Streep, I don't like this side of you. And she, her response, which I love and I was thinking of, is, is not a box. Don't have sides. sides. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. And so don't put me in a box because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't work. And as soon as you think, oh, this is who you are fully, no. No. There's going to be something else to be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know I that didn't thing. I consider that. Or and yeah. I love when I've known someone for a long time and they tell me something and I'm like, oh, I had no, no idea. idea. Yeah. Because I had a friend just yesterday tell me something and I was like, Wow, I've known you for a long time and I had no idea about that thing. That's a cool side of you that I never knew or a cool part of aspect of your growing up years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, huh, interesting. I love that. Because you can't know everything about anyone. No. Right? You know, so for you to be like, for anybody to be like, I'm judging you on what I see, it's like, but what you see is so little of the story. It's, and it's so minor ob- yeah. compared to like the expansiveness of people's yeah. lives, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's talk about what we're actually going to talk about. Well, I... I oh, one, one more. Just one, one more. more thing. One more. Actually, one more. I wanted to... Because, you know, most people with Thanksgiving, they talk about what they're thankful for. hmm And, you, you know, whatever. And I think a lot of times that's super corny because it's... People do it because they feel like they have to do it. Yep. It's like, oh, it's November. I better talk about what I'm grateful for. I try to be grateful year-round. Sure. And I try to say to my children, I'm grateful for... X, Y, Z. I'm grateful for my family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for me and for you, it means the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm grateful for the family that I have chosen to keep oh. in my life. Yes. Whether that be friends, who mm-hmm. I consider family, yep. or family that I still consider family. Because there's a lot of family that I'm like, nope. Just because you're blood related to me. Ooh. Most people I'm blood related yeah. to, I'm so, like, no thanks. get out. However... You know, as I'm very grateful for my children and a home and a job and yeah. food and all of those things. Because there was f- food insecurity when mm-hmm. I was a child. There was some house <laughs> insecurity. There was just different things. We were never houseless. But there was all kinds of insecurity. Yeah, yeah. So I'm grateful for all of those things that most people kind of take for granted. But I want to say I'm grateful for you. Oh, Because you know how most people, well not most people, but a lot of people say how, oh my son or my daughter is my best friend. It's like gross. Gross, yeah. Uh, as you're growing up, yeah. you should not be your parent's friend. Sure. You know. But <laughs> yeah. as adults, yeah, yeah. I love that we now have that. Really. Uh, I mean, we've always been tight. Always, always, yeah. But the fact that I can tell you anything. Hell yeah. No matter how, like, awful. Because there are things I tell you that make me sound like an awful, awful person. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because I know you're like, yeah, girl. Sure. (laughs) I agree. Here's the country thing I did today. And you're like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And? I would have done the same. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And so I'm very grateful that I have that. And I'm grateful I have you. I'm grateful for you, girl. I tell Gavin all the time. 
Well, because I've told you to your face too. Like there are two people I could hang out with every day, all day, and it's you and my husband. Like other than that, I won't be with anyone else. Like I right. love our family. Don't you know I love our family? And I've lived in this house many a time. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're the you and Gavin are the only two people I really don't get like enough. I need a break. <laughs> you know, I need you to leave. Yeah. 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 And I so get I. That. I you know, and it's nice. It's I love where we are now in our life because, like, we have a compound. I see you practically every day. You know what I mean? Like, we go get coffee we want to. Like, we have a very... I love it. I love our relationship, and I love that it's blossomed to, from being in this, like... You know, it's always... We've always been tight, always been very close. It was always my favorite place to go as a kid. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, I didn't go on vacation. So, like, coming to your house was vacation. And so, yeah, I'm glad that we have this relationship, and it's, like, the only consistent relationship I've ever had in my life. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. With anybody. Yeah. It's crazy. Yes, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I was talking to Gavin the other day, and I was emotional, because, you know, Annabelle, and, uh, <laughs> you know, three and a half weeks later, and I'm still, like, crying every day, but, you know, it's the first, this is the first holiday season without Annabelle, and that's really weird. Yeah. But, like... When I, when I was thinking about, like, who's been the most consistent in my life? It hasn't been a parent. It hasn't even been grandma. It hasn't been a sibling. It's been you. It's always been you. You know what I mean? Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. On that. Actually, on that I did want to say one more. Okay. <laughs> just, uh, just because I want to share this because I thought it was funny. Okay. Was that, uh, the term I learned yesterday <laughs> that I talked about with you. I was listening to oh, right. uh, Bianca Del Rio. Right. I love her. On She was on Delta Works podcast. And she she was talking about people being drunk. Okay. And what how, what irritates her? Because yeah. she drinks. Mm. And she's like, that's fine. I'm a happy drunk. I don't want, though, people to come up to me, A, with their problems, or B, no. with, you know, they were going to ask, they just want to chat at me. And she said, because people often, when they're drunk, become assholes. Asshole. I'm like, what's, that, what's an asshole? <laughs> Not an asshole, because people are often that anyway. Most all the time. The ask. Yep. Hole. And then she's like, you know, because they will ask you a million questions want all this information or advice or whatever, and then heed none of it. Yep. Yep. It's like, and then be like, I asked those questions because I just wanted to hear myself. Ah, chat. Yeah. It's really like, sometimes you bonked them, Rio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super drunk, and so I just want to hear my voice. Yeah. Yeah, but you're the only one. You know what's so funny, though, is I remember when I used to drink alcohol, and I would get to a point where I felt like people were being too quiet. So I was like, oop, something's got to fill this void. Guess what? I volunteer as tribute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, being like, so what are you guys doing later? And we're all at a party. Like, we're here, Annika. What do you think we're doing later? It's two in the morning. Like, what the fuck do you mean what are we doing later? It's time to go night night. Tell me about your childhood <laughs> trauma. Like, I'm just, like, trying to continue right. to talk. I'm yeah. sorry, but this conversation needs to be going because mm-hmm. the silence is making me uncomfortable. When I go to sleep, you can be silent. Until then, keep talking. Chat, chat. Yeah, I, yeah, oh. awkward. All right, now. Okay, okay, okay. So it is, you know, Native American uh, history. Heritage. Is it heritage? Okay. So Native people rule month. And we've been talking about Indigenous people. Well, we talk about Indigenous people all the time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's more, it, I feel like it's important to highlight some Native things. Um, and if we're, if, you know, if they're going to give us a heritage month, then we're going to use it. Um, Absolutely. And so I want to talk about this thing that happened. And it's more, it's kind of, it's tragic. But it brings what? awareness to... The horrible actions of white people, okay? Mm, well. Okay. I know. We need more of that. So there's a documentary that came out based on a book. The book is called Killers of the Flower Moon, okay? Oh, yeah. And then um, the movie is coming out this year, or no, is in theaters currently under the same name, Killers of the Flower Moon. And so what this is, is it's a story about the Osage tribe who lived in Oklahoma. And... Uh, the Osage tribe, they were, you know, predominantly in central United States. And then in the 1870s, the U.S. said, no, no, we have to move you because we want this land. Go to your reservation. Right. And so they moved them um, out, out of Kansas and into Oklahoma. Right. But it was very rocky and it was northeastern Oklahoma. So they thought it was worthless. Right. White people are like, here, you can live here. There's nothing fucking here. So you can have yeah, no benefit. This is trash land. You can have it. Right. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, Indigenous people from the eastern side of the United States and onward were pushed and pushed and pushed to reservations, right? But the Osage tribe were one of the very few American Indian tribes to buy their own reservation. So they bought it um, using the proceeds from their sale of the Kansas lands to white, like, because they sold their land to settlers. So they were able to take this money 
and buy their reservation. So they okay. own it outright. Um, meaning, like, they retain sovereignty and more rights to their Oklahoma property, and, like, the federal government had no rights to it anymore, because it wasn't that. theirs, right? Um, so what happened, the U.S. said, here's this shitty land that's not going to give you literally anything. Well, guess what? They found, um, it was rich, rich, rich in oil. And, um, so there were large deposits discovered before 1900, and the Osage retained communal mineral rights. So they had rights on all of it. Which makes you very wealthy, mm, mm-hmm. right? Um, so they came into huge wealth, and prospectors had to pay the tribe for leases to extract the oil. More money, right? Um, and then they got royalty from profits of the oil. Like, they, they were sitting fat. So in 1923, the Osage people earned $30 million in royalties. In 1923. In today's, that's equivalent to about $540 million. Wow. The Osage tribe was worth more than half a billion dollars in 1923. Like, that's that's insane. That's wild. Wild, right? And they were known as the richest uh, community tribe clan in the world. In the world. Wow. Well, I mean, half a billion dollars in sure. that time. That's a lot of money. Um. So they had, you know, they did what any person does with money. They traveled, they bought nicer things, they sent their kids to private school, they had luxury cars, and they bought mansions. Not what we think of a mansions today, of course, but nice big houses. They had white help, right? So they were Love that. all agreed. Um, and so the, there was also Tiffany's, you know Tiffany's. There was yeah. a counter at the local trading post because the indigenous people were buying Tiffany so much. I love that. Don't you fucking love it? Okay, so, um, it gets a little crazy. So, what happened, what happened was, there weren't a ton of, the tribe wasn't very big, but all these sale, or all the minerals and all of the oil, everyone had what they call head rights, which means they had, um, like, stock in it, and they got royalties from it, and every Osage person, minor through adulthood, um, everyone had it, every single one, and, um, and then it was passed down to whether you're married, whether you were married to a white man or a white woman and you had white children. It was passed down who was your next of kin, which could be kind of anyone, right? Um, well, the federal government, what year was it? Um, 1920s, passed a law, um, 1921, sorry, uh, to help the Osage manage their wealth. Mm. So what that means is that... I smell a rat. Right. They deemed the vast majority of the tribes to be incompetent. Oh, of course. Um, to handle that m- sum of money, which, I mean, that is inaccurate. People should do what they want, but I would be incompetent to handle $540 oh, billion, You know, whatever. Um, so they, the courts decided that, oh, well, you need to have a court-appointed guardians. So every member of the tribe who was deemed incompetent was the vast, which was literally the vast majority of them. They all were assigned a white guardian. Even minors who had living parents were assigned white guardians. Mm. Right. Um, so the white lawyers, the white businessmen, they were not shortchanged because a lot of this money was being funneled into this guardianship program. Of course. Um, what so a clever way to steal their money. Yeah, and then white men were marrying Osage women. And then, oh no, they died, right? Right. Oh, so, no, I have your money. Over the course of 10 years, like 50 Osage people went missing or were murdered for their head right Suspicious? alone. Suspicious? No. Mm. And so there's there's a reason that this has been talked about a lot is because there is, what's her name? The pioneer woman, Ree Drummond. Yeah. She is famous for being a pioneer woman, right. <laughs> for being a little chef woman. And her husband... Whatever his face is, Mr. Drummond, um, he's a part of the, the, the Hale family, um, who were, like, the guardians of most of the Osage tribe. Like, they're the ones who kind of started this. Okay. So, Mr. Drummond currently owns 9% of o- Osage land, and it's currently worth $240 million. So, he has generational wealth from not... Anything he should have. Exactly. And all of that land in Northeast um, Oklahoma was Osage land. And little by little through murder, um, and because police didn't care, 
well, and because of colonization, oh, and because of racism, um, there were Native people who were found in the bottom of ravines that were decomposing, and no one knew how they died, so you know what they would rule it? Accidental because of alcoholism. Oh, sure. Right. So... Oh, those drunken Indians, because that's what people used to say all the time. Yep. And do you know... White people introduced Native Americans to that fire water. And then do you know what happened? They put them in such shitty fucking social situations that they needed an escape. They did what every other addict does. Your life is too hard, so you turn to a substance. And guess what? They turn to booze. And that's why Native Americans shouldn't drink alcohol, because they're so susceptible. Um, But it's like Asian people, too. A lot of Asian people, they don't have the like a a chromosome or a, a gene or whatever it is in their body that helps them digest a lot of different alcohols. So they immediately turn red. Oh. Yeah, yeah, anyway. But yeah, so the Osage murders, it was known as like the reign of terror. Um, and I don't remember, again, how long it went on, but about, I think, 10 years. But it was in fucking sane that so many of the, so much of the tribe, they were just slaughtered for their money. Oh, in 1920, 60 Osage people were murdered and yeah. missing in, just in Oklahoma. And 60 of them, the tribe, again, wasn't very big. It was tiny. Yeah. Right. Insane, right? That is crazy. It's that crazy. So everyone, like, read the book or go see the movie or look up on it. It is and really... And say again what it's called? The book and movie are both called Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay. But it's it's fascinating. And the movie that just came out is Martin Scorsese. So it's going to be okay. epic and big. Yeah. Um, and he used real indigenous people. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Oh, my so God. So in his movie... About... About indigenous girl, people. Girl, honey, oh, honey. He used mm. indigenous people. Can you believe it? No. I can't believe it. I, can't I do, I, you know, I love that that is a thing now. Mm. I mean, I think it's awful that it's taken this long for that to be a thing. Agreed. But I, I have noticed uh, that TV shows and movies and mm-hmm. stuff that are about indigenous folk are being played by indigenous oh, weird. folk. Yeah, right? It's I mean, so good. <clears throat> I think that uh, that whole trend is like trans people playing trans people. Weird. Indigenous people playing indigenous people, black people, I mean, mostly, (laughs) but listen, there were movies that were made in the earlier days of film where there was a character who was considered passing, Mm, and and instead of getting just a very light-skinned black woman, they got a white woman. Yeah. It was like, you know there are actors and actresses of every shade. Yep. You know, and who I, like Lena Horne. Oh, yeah. Lena Horne, legendary singer-actress- was very light skin. Yeah. They had to develop a foundation specifically for her skin because she was so fair mm-hmm. for a black woman. Okay. But too dark for a white woman. Yeah. So Max Factor actually invented a color specifically for her. Oh, wow. Isn't I love that, that. Isn't that cool? Uh, but when the movie um, Showboat came along, mm-hmm. one of the main characters is passing as white. And Lena Horne was like, yeah, I should absolutely play that part. Yeah. And they were like, no, we're going to give it to this white girl. And it's like, Susie Q over here. Who is white, 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 Who is white, naturally blonde. With her blonde. green eyes and freckles. <laughs> yeah. And like, what? What is happening Oh, here? Lord. So I'm glad that that is actually a Becoming thing. Becoming a thing, yeah. 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 Well, there, and there's some really good uh, things on... On the on the Netflix and on the different things, this isn't Reservoir Dogs. Oh, Reservoir Dogs, yeah. And there's a couple Reservation movies. Dogs. Reservation. Reservoir Dogs. Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs is different altogether. All movie. Together. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. Very violent movie. Reservation Dogs. So good. So good. Watch yeah. it. But there's lots of things out there, mm-hmm. and if you look on, I think is it one of them right now is Hulu or one of those has a thing that you can click on that is specifically Oh, perfect. Uh, like indigenous. a banner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, because it's the month, you can click on this thing for to find more indigenous movies. I love that. I also want to highlight a movie that I didn't expect to make me get, like, give me all my indigenous vibes. Because um, you know Predator. Yeah, of course. There's a movie that came out. I've never seen it. You've but never I know seen about Predator? It. No. Crazy. It's not that scary. It's not scary at all. Okay. Um, but Prey. There's a movie that came out a couple of years ago called Prey. And so it's Predator in the Americas pre colonization. Okay. Honey. Or like around the time of colonization. So it's early, 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 early though. Like no Trail of Tears, no westward expansion, none of that. So it's like colonies. Okay. Um, but Predator shows up and it's. I don't remember what her name is. But she, the main character is an indigenous girl. The whole 
all of her tribe are indigenous people and like they fight predator. It's so cute. That cute. It's really good though. I it's really cute. It's a monster eating this, them, but it's like, no, no it's this cool. native girl outsmarts an alien. Ugh, I'm about it. Is that what Predator is? An alien? Yeah. Girl, he has like weird uh, tendril hair and his mouth opens like this. Ugh. Yeah, he's an oh. alien. Him's an alien. So like a Venus flytrap. Him's an alien. Gross. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's grody. Um, so the person that I went, because it's a person, as a but person whatever, person. is that I wanted to um, highlight was. Chief Standing Bear. Okay. Do you know about Chief Standing Bear? I do, Bear? a little bit, yeah. I had heard of him. Okay. And I, like, heard bits of, like, I'd heard of the Trail of Tears. Yeah. I didn't know what the Trail of Tears was. Well, actually was, yeah. Right. So, um, I'm going to just read this first part, and then I'm going to just talk about it. So, the remarkable story of Chief Standing Bear, mm-hmm. who in 1879 persuaded a federal judge to recognize Native Americans as persons with the right to sue for their freedom, established him as one of the nation's earliest civil rights heroes. So what happened was... Tell me what happened. The government said, okay, uh, Punkus tribe, we want the land that you're on. Yep. So we're going to... Because they were in Nebraska. Okay. And so they're like, we're going to put your ass in Oklahoma. Okay. But you're going to walk to Oklahoma. It's like 500 miles. From Nebraska? From Nebraska. Isn't that like Canadian border almost down to like Mexican border? Like that's real far. Well... You know, if I knew anything about okay. geography, I would tell you that. Sure. But they marched 500 miles. Okay. And a third of the tribe died, hence the name Trail of Tears. Uh. A third of their tribe died. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Nebraska to Oklahoma? Yeah. That's the Trail of Tears? Yeah. Because the Trail of Tears I know is from East Coast to Oklahoma. Oh. Well, that's... But this is anyway. what I, they said in here. Okay. Okay, no, you... you so go. I might have it wrong. No, it's okay. forgive me if I have it wrong. But they did go from... Nebraska to Oklahoma That's because still... the government was like, this is now our land, but you can have that shit down there. Yeah. Well, and it, so Chief Standing Bear, yeah. uh, as he's going to there with his family, sure. two of his children die on this trek because it's <sighs> grueling and it's like ridiculous um, and it's winter. Offer, yeah. And so his daughter died first on the actual trail. Sure. And then when they got to Oklahoma, his mm-hmm. son died. And his son said, you know, please, as he was dying, please bury my body in our native land. So back in Nebraska? Here. Oh my yeah, God. back in Nebraska. And so Chief Standing Bear was like, well, that's of course. Where else would we bury you? Because that's our, that was their yeah. tradition. Um, that, so he and a handful of the other folks from the tribe started back. And this is all on horseback, on foot, Whatever. Jesus. 500 miles. Yeah. The, I can't even... I can't fathom it. mm So, when they got back, uh, they were arrested. Because it's like, well, you're not supposed to be here. We told you to leave. We told you to leave. Mm-hmm. You are now going to be arrested. And um, this general, his name is General Crook, was like... He felt sympathy for him. He's like... He shouldn't be in jail. He was bringing his son back to bury him. Yeah. You know, whatever. Let him out. And it's like, and you can't hold people for just basically forever just because you wanted to arrest them. And so uh, he and General uh, Chief Standing Bear were like going to sue for habeas corpus to get them out of there. And it was said to them that because Indians were not people, mm. that didn't apply to them. And so he had to petition the court to recognize indigenous people as people. Because they weren't mm-hmm. even recognized as people. Yeah. Which to me is so gross. Fucking Just the idea of it yeah. is so gross. Subhuman, so yeah. And so, uh, and they got, they were getting nowhere. And this uh, captain or general crook went to the media of the time, whatever that was. <laughs> You know, one local paper. I don't know. And said, hey, this is what's happening. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it ran in the papers and stuff. And it then, of course, created embarrassment for the local government. Yeah, because how And weak. so they were like, fine. We yeah. will we will let him go to trial for this. Yeah. We'll, and we'll have a hearing. He wasn't allowed to speak. Yeah. Because, again, not a person. Yeah. He and he was speak. indigenous. Uh, and the judge, who amazingly enough, they got a sympathetic judge. Crazy. Who, at the end of the hearing, yeah. allowed him to speak. And uh, he he said he didn't have to, 
And that was one of the things they were like, he doesn't get to speak. And this judge said, I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah. And um, though I'm not going to quote it verbatim, um, verbatim, his whole thing was, you know, he said to them, he goes, I'm a man. Mm -hmm. If I reach out and, you know, shake your hand, you, you know, it's like you'll feel my hand if I... If I stab my hand, you know, I will bleed. Yeah. And you will bleed the exact same color. Mm -hmm. And it was basically that kind of, yeah, yeah. you know. We the, all bleed red. We all bleed mm -hmm. red. And the judge uh, found in favor of him. Wow. And said, okay, now indigenous people will be recognized as people. Which doesn't feel like that should even be a thing. Mm -mm. But it was. Mm -mm. Um, and his kind of story was lost for a really long time. And it wasn't until the 90s that people started talking about him again. And now he has a statue in the U.S. Capitol Statuary Hall. It's like an 11-foot tall uh, statue. And at the bottom oh. it has his quote about you know being human, being a man. Um, but you would think that that's kind of where that story would end. But no. Yeah. Uh, in 1966, the government... Uh, terminated the recognition of the uh, Ponca tribe. They're like, they're not, we don't recognize them as a tribe. Oh my God, I hate it. Because it was a smaller tribe. Because, ha yeah. you know, so much of the tribe died. Yeah. And whatever. It's like, eh. Yeah. We, we, we don't recognize them. So it took 30 years for them to restore government recognition of them as a tribe. And it was actually, and I was shocked to hear this, it was George W. who signed it into uh, law that they were a recognized tribe. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. And you know what? I hate that shit. I hate that shit because it doesn't make me want to be like, yay, Bush. You know what I mean? I know. It's so I horrible. Know. I know. But I'm glad that they got federal recognition. It is really sad. But look up Chief uh, Chief Standing Bear. Read about him. There's a little a little short documentary about him. It's very interesting. I love that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about one thing I really want to talk about. It's really important to me is in indigenous cultures in more modern day, there was a term that was coined called two spirit. Yeah. Okay. And two spirit are what a lot of queer or LGBTQ plus indigenous people would be considered two yes. spirit. Often two spirit nowadays could be you are trans, you're non-binary, you're both genders, you're no gender, you know, you're a third gender, but that would be two spirit. Anything that yeah, falls under that, yeah, right? Yeah. I've even heard like uh, non-heterosexual people claim to be two spirit and that's cool. Um, but all tribes, all tribes um, believed in gender diversity they didn't believe that it was just man and woman. They're, you know, and that things needed to balance and whatever, but there were some um, indigenous tribes that believe there were like 13 genders. You know what I mean? It would be like man, woman, woman who acts like man, man who acts like woman, yeah. like X, Y, and Z, right? Um, man who, or someone who acts like neither, someone who acts like both. That's already six. Like, bitch, that's a lot. Um, but, so, so they were just, and they were, they were an integral part of the tribe. And a lot of times people think that they were just like medicine people. And a lot of times they were. They were the keeper of knowledge. They were the healers. They were, right. you know, um, they're the ones who you talk to before you went on like a journey, right? Right. But also they were, they were hunters, they were gatherers, they were warriors. And so let's talk about the, these, this one specific. So her name is Os, Os their, their name is Oshtish. And they're um, Absoluki or Crow. Okay. okay? Um, so they were the keeper of the Bade tradition, which is a male-bodied person in the Crow community who lived their daily life in a feminine role. Okay. Okay. So essentially, a I'm trans with you woman, so far. A trans woman, right? Um, earning their name finds them and kills them was Osh that's what Oshtish means. Finds them and kills them. <laughs> Um, because in a fight against the Lakota, Oshtish was revered a member of the tribe for being a warrior. And nice. he's this trans woman, this warrior trans woman. I love that. Um, um, but they also, they had a lodge and they had a family and they're considered a leader among the Bade and the Bade are the two spirit people of okay. the Crow tribe, right? Um, so, but then here's the thing. 1880s, guess what happens? White missionaries show up. Ugh. And they began and to ruin everything. Yeah, right? They began the process attempting to, what they call, in quotations, white men eyes, like white man eyes, um, 
to this whole, the whole tribe, not just the Bade people, yeah. right? Of course. So um, they were pretty obsessed, these missionaries, with like the code of religious offenses. Hmm, shocking. Um, and it was basically just a moral directive that forbade non-Christians um, spiritual practices. So you don't get to have your spiritual practice unless you're a Christian. Oh, sure. Right, right, right. right. And that really started the Native Americans couldn't do any of their spiritual traditions until the Native American Religious Act or Spiritual Act, whatever it is, in like the 60s. The 1960s. Right. So they couldn't smudge. So nearly 100 years. Right. They couldn't burn sage. They couldn't use sweet grass. They couldn't use tobacco, which is, those are like, there's, right. uh, there's another one I can't remember. But there's four natural medicines. They couldn't use any of them. You know what I mean? Anyway. Because white people. White people. Um, so they just were persecuting natives um, over their dating and their marriage traditions and their gender traditions. Um, and it was ob- obviously very much in opposition to Christian Europe, where they were like, man, woman. Period. <laughs> period. That's on period. And man marries woman, then owns woman. Well, and that's yes. it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. In Christian European, I told you this last podcast, that um, heterosexual monogamy is a is a construct of colonialism. Yeah. Specifically monogamy. It wasn't very... I mean, there were people who were monogamous, but it wasn't the, the, the main ideal of relationship, right? right? Um, so throughout the 1920s, tribal members who refused to abandon their culture and their traditions were penalized, like, penalized or imprisoned. Um, and their family's treaty rations were cut or denied completely. Right, because you're not doing what the white folks yeah. want. You're like, I'm a trans woman... And they're like, no, you can't be that. You know what I mean? And then you're like... That's not a thing. And then they're like, nor, creator said I was, whatever. And then they're like, prison. So not only do you go to prison, but your entire clan, your family, your tribe, were cutting their rations. Or were denying them food. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, So it wasn't long before Oshtish and other two spirits um, became the target of that code and were imprisoned. Um, But Crow chiefs and warriors spoke out in support of Two-Spirit values, which is really awesome. And so they pushed really hard against uh, U.S. agents, and they gained the body's release, which is really cool. Um, and it's it is, it's great to see, 1920s, that there were yeah, indigenous amazing. men right, who were fighting for their, their third gender, queer brothers and sisters, right? right? And today, because so many people have been Christianized... The ideology of two spirit, it's still around, but there are even indigenous people who are like, no. You know well, what right. I mean? Absolutely I, not. One of the queens that I followed on, um, that I followed on the Ticking Top, yeah. was on Canada's Drag Race. Okay. And I know you know who she is. I'm just blanking on her name at this moment. Yeah. But she was talking about the fact that because of colonization, because of white people doing all the shit that they did to indigenous people, that so many tribes actually lost so much of the traditions yeah. that they. Most younger people at that point were like, what is this two-spirit thing? Mm -hmm. They didn't even know it was a thing. They didn't know they were revered in their culture. They didn't Mm -hmm. know because it was like, we're now white Christian. Yeah, that's our place. Because that's what we were forced to do. And it's been for so many years that so much of their culture was lost. And it isn't until fairly recently that a lot of the tribes were like, yeah, we're going back to our culture Mm -hmm. and fuck this nonsense. Yeah. Because... This is our. This is who we are, yeah. and we have to regain who we are. Agreed. You know, it's mm-hmm. like because if we don't even have our own identity, what do we have? What do we have exactly? Right. So I think, yeah, I think uh, because two spirit people were such holders of culture, it is no wonder that Christianity and Europeans got here and started to imprison indigenous people and take away parts of their culture, and you know. Uh, pathologize them and also just make it illegal to do their cultural traditional things and so that's generations 1920s 40 years yeah so no wonder younger people didn't know no wonder younger people weren't being taught right. and by the time they pass like oh you can do your your spiritual practices again by the time people aren't doing them right you know what i mean well and so much of it has been forgotten and yeah because they're not even they're not even telling it because a lot of of course uh the way that indigenous history uh, was passed down was through story. Yeah, it was passed down from from parent to child, and it was passed down through the you know storytelling in as they gathered mm-hmm. and whatever. And so they stopped storytelling because it was troublesome, and often found them getting in trouble. And yeah. so these things were just lost in time. Yeah, and so 
I'm so happy that this thing that was lost is being found again, yeah. is being celebrated. Yeah, it's like reconnecting, it's rediscovering yeah. your culture. And that's and I say this, I feel like I've said this a thousand times on the podcast, that I don't care if you're a mixed native. You know what I mean? Like learn your history. Like learn about yeah. it because it's important to know because you're doing what your indigenous ancestors would have wanted and white people would have in your existence goes against what white people wanted. They wanted yeah. to assimilate the fuck out of indigenous people so they were just white people. Well, because we, you know, white people don't want anything different. Oh, God. And that's so They boring. want to be German mayonnaise. Girl. And don't get me wrong, I love mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise, but that's not all I want. Girl. I want all, I want spice. Yes, I girl. I want, you know, all girl. the foods. I want all the colors, all the food groups, all the things. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I, uh, where I just completely blanked on what I was going to say. God damn it, being old Another is Another stroke. I know, I probably just had one just as we were talking. Oh my, so oh my god. How much time do we have? None. Oh, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's been fun, bye. We have, we have come to the end of our time. But, well, uh, listen, I want everybody who's listening uh, to just even read one story. One. Go Find something on the internet about... One. Indigenous folks. Yep. Uh, look up a name you even know, maybe. Yep. Uh, look up Sitting Bull yep. or Pocahontas or yep. Sacago By yep. the way, that is that is one of my little pet peeves. Is once Sacagawea. I learn how to say it properly, mm-hmm. her name is not Sacagawea. It's a it's Saka. What? Sacago mm-hmm. Which isn't even really her real name. No. But no one knows what her real name was because, no. again, stolen. That's why or you know what wait, you know what you're doing what you're doing you should look up whose land you're on you know what I mean oh look yeah. up what land you're on and get there's there's apps for that now there, you can look and see what tribes land you're yeah. currently living on and then you and know, then learn something about them learn something about them and then you know what in all your social media you can just do a thing called the land back acknowledgement and you can talk about acknowledging the land you're on because guess what Thanksgiving isn't about fucking white people you know what I mean and it shouldn't be so honor the natives whose land you're on. There you I'm go. not going to say who's I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you're being thankful for the bounty of food that yeah. is way more than you and your family need for yeah. what, you know, give back yeah, something, yeah. you know, and, and learn something. Yeah, and watch an indigenous movie or watch Reservation Dogs, but don't watch like Dances with Wolves or something like that. That's, don't no. do that. Um, if you're going to watch it, if you need to watch like a Disney indigenous movie, mm. watch Brother Bear. Brother Bear. It's, I love, don't get me wrong, I love Pocahontas. Because just because of my childhood, yeah. but I know that it's inaccurate and it's, oh, it's inappropriate. Um, so watch watch Brother Bear; it's much better. Yeah, the fact that they're hooking her up with John Smith and she's a child, a literal child. I know. Well, in the they're about eighteen years old, right? Both of them eighteen in the cartoon. Um, well, or because no, even in the cartoon, he's a grown ass man. Well, but she's she, some like unidentifiable. She's age. a little baby. Um, or watch Moana. Those are indigenous. Oh, I love Moana. Mm-hmm. And uh, the name for Two Spirit in uh, Pacific Island culture is. Uh, oh, God, I just went blank on the word. That's what. Um, is it. Say, say the word. Is it Mihu? Uh, oh, Mahu. Mahu. Mm-hmm. Mahu. Mahu so, Wahine Ma- means trans woman. <laughs> yeah, so Mahu is a whole culture mm-hmm. uh, recognized group in, uh, like, Pacific Island culture. Yeah, yeah. And, and like Native Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mahu. Which just means, uh, it's like two-spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people used it as a derogatory term for a long time, yeah. but it's being reclaimed. But yeah, look up Mahu. Look up stuff. Yeah, Learn girl, stuff. look up indigenous people. Learn stuff. Don't be a loser. A, have a lovely Thanksgiving. Do that, I guess. Eat all the things. Enjoy all the things. Lovely. I hope you eat all the food, but I hope it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> just kidding, Ugh. I love you. And then, you know, tell us what's up and what's happening and yeah. send us a letter or a letter because you're going to write you to hand me. hand write me a letter? On the snail mail. And uh, tell us what, because we still, we are looking for suggestions for our, our 100th episode, which is coming right up. Girl. I mean, it's going to be here just any second. Yeah. And so we're looking for suggestions for that. We want to do something kind of yes. special. So just uh, write to us at it would seem as though at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And... Look for us on your favorite podcasting app because we're there. We're there, and we tell your there. friends. We made it. Tell your family. Yeah. Tell anybody. Tell to your come listen to us. Yeah. Take it. Uh, write us on your church community board. Yeah. Oh, love oh, love feel get educated. Oh, honey. But in the meantime, we're gonna, we gonna go. go. Bye. Bye. Bye.
It would seem as though. Mm-hmm.